Hello Ratbags, my name is Jade, welcome to a Subnautica Below Zero guide today for the sea truck and the vehicle mobility bay or the vehicle utility bay. One of them things, this is gonna work on Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, or PC, it's exactly the same. I'm gonna show you the easy quick steps how you could get hold of the main vehicle in Subnautica Below Zero. Gone is the sea moth from the first one, now it's all about the sea truck. Let's go, don't forget to like, make sure you subscribe for more Subnautica Below Zero content and the best in survival games, news, guides, and opinion. So I'm presuming you guys have played the game a little bit now, you've got some resources and maybe you've made the sea glide. If not, you can still go ahead and do this without even getting the sea glide made, but the chances are that's probably a best bet. It'll get you around a little bit quicker and you will need it maybe for exploring some of the deeper parts. We're heading off over to the emergency supply cache. This is in one of the Arctic kelp forests. Now there's two of these forests, you've got one to the east and one to the west. So make sure you go to the one with this little marker on. When you get there, it's very early in the game. I'm sure you guys have already done it. You'll find the mineral detector. So this is gonna help you make your mineral detector. So you can go and get lots and lots of resources quick and easy. And there's a little PDA. There's lots of various other little resources lying around to grab all that stuff too. But what we're looking for here is a cave entrance in the Arctic kelp forest. Now there's a bunch of these. In fact, there's around nine in one of these and around six in the other, depending on what way you went. And this is where you're going to find the fragments for the vehicle utility bait, which obviously you need to go ahead and start actually making the sea truck. So there's one, grab it, scan it with your scanner, job done. And you should, you should find all the pieces in these caves. Now these caves can be a bit challenging, especially if you're brand new to Subnautica, you've never played the first one. So you've got lots of these oxygen plants that you can go ahead and use. The caves do go even deeper, so you have got to be a bit careful that you don't go too deep, as it can get quite easy to get lost. Pretty much all the entrances lead to a central chamber where you've got these big roots and they go down even further. So make sure you get some oxygen and keep just exploring the top ones and eventually you'll find more pieces for the vehicle bait. You can also go ahead and scan some of the sea monkey nests and this is another great place to find some of this stuff. So sometimes you'll find either the laser cutter or the propulsion gun or it will be the vehicle utility bait. It's pretty faint to spot sometimes so don't concentrate too much on what's inside or the egg just go ahead and scan on the outside. Fingers crossed you shouldn't be able to have too many issues finding them, but if you start getting a bit lost or disorientated or you feel like you've explored all the caves, don't worry, I'm gonna show you another location where you can find the vehicle mobility bay as well as then get the pieces you need for the sea truck. Now while you're here, there's lots of these outcrops that you should be getting some of the resources from. Particularly, you're gonna need a lot of silver as well as obviously some copper and any lead that you see, that's really important. There are some dangers, as you can see, the little uh, scuttle clownfish, uh, they will pop out and you can get the sulfur from them, so you might need some of that too. But keep going and eventually you'll find another piece, and this is what it also looks like, like a round circular piece too. So yeah, make sure it's the one with the emergency beacon. The other Arctic help zone that you have towards the other side of the drop pod, that generally has some other bits and bobs in it, but I don't remember seeing too many of the vehicle based stuff. Now every game that you start, sometimes it can change the drop pod location. I find that in survival mode, I've always kind of got this little rise and this is a good marker to discover the twisty bridges. Either way, wherever you are, find a point of entry to the twisty bridges and stick to always going down in that location. So here I've got the middle, I've got the right and I've got the left. This basically will get you used to where you're going. This can get really, really easy to get lost exploring some of these zones. So always find that point of entry and always go down from that point and then either veer off to the left or veer off to the right depending on what you need. So follow the path I'm exactly doing as we go and get our first piece of a sea truck. Keeping the mushrooms on the right, you can see them there and then you can clearly see a piece of the sea truck laying there on the floor. There's also an oxygen plant next door. And this is why I say this can be a little bit harder sometimes because there's other dangers, there's creatures that will attack you a little bit more and the see the actual oxygen plants aren't as close as they are in the caves. But again, it's all in your preference. But as long as you've got the sea glide and maybe an air bladder, you should be okay to explore some of these zones without the need for a rebreather or the even more advanced oxygen tank, which you can find down here too. So I've put my cheats on just to show you some of the locations. Now they are semi-random, pretty much every fragment has a semi-random chance of appearing. So not always guaranteed to be in that same spot, but they will be in that same sort of area. So bear that in mind, you might not find items directly where I'm showing you. But I'm showing this route because this leads to a little platform and this is where you find the habitat builder as well as the oxygen tank, the advanced one. But keep going past it down. 
Instead of going towards them though, you can check out how to get all that gear in my other video. Keep going down to the very bottom, pretty much of this trench. There's a few openings that will take you all the way down. You don't want to go down there, but more or less just to the bottom here, you'll see plenty of sea glide pieces lying around and follow this bridge. Now there is lots of oxygen plants, so you can go and grab this. This way you can do this without cheats and a bit of luck, you'll find some vehicle bay fragments spawning alongside this bridge too. And we're pretty close to where you meet Alan. So these are more pieces, as I mentioned, I think earlier, you can get loads of sea truck pieces here as well. One here and then on the other side of this little obelisk that's broken and then follow them through if you want to progress in the story. So you get the idea, these pieces may be spawning in different places, but they'll be pretty close by and there's lots of sea truck pieces down here. Just use your air bladder to get back up to the surface quick. You may find other pieces nearby as well of the vehicle bay, but that's the quickest and easiest ones that I've ever found, as well as for the sea truck. Okay, so you're back, you've got all them pieces, let's start crafting and making the vehicle mobility bay, and then go ahead and do the sea truck. You're going to need one titanium ingot, and that's going to be five titaniums to make that, so that's a reduction, I'm pretty sure it used to be ten, and you're also going to need one lubricant and then one uh, computer chip. The computer chip is made out of some table coral, some copper wire and one piece of gold. So once you've got them resources done, you can go ahead and build the mobility vehicle bay and you can put this down anywhere. You can also pack it up and take it with you, so don't worry if you're going to be moving to a new base location, always bring this with you as well. And then you just got to simply put it in some water somewhere. This is where you're going to make your sea truck and the sea truck is special because you can make lots of compartments to make it almost a huge massive base that moves and goes along. Now to make the sea truck you're going to need another titanium ingot, you're going to need advanced wiring kit which is pretty much a wiring kit which is two silver plus the computer chip, some glass, three pieces of lead and a power cell. So make sure you pin the recipe, that'll always help you out as well. You can see I'm just getting my resources there. I need three pieces of lead, I managed to get them. You can find them in the shallows, in and around, usually a little bit deeper sometimes as well, but you should find them in the Twisted Bridge shallows too. Let's craft the titanium ingot, and that's pretty much a five piece of titanium. Now you do need batteries for the power cell, but remember you can use dead batteries. So any batteries you've been using that have gone dead, Make sure you've taken out the full batteries out of your infantry and only use the dead ones to craft a power cell. You do need a piece of silicon rubber as well to make that power cell and you can see I'm just making sure I've got the dead battery in my infantry. This trick only works with power cells, you can't craft any new items that need batteries. If you use a dead battery you'll end up having just a dead charge. I think they changed that because in the first game I'm pretty sure it always used to give you a full charge. Then the wiring kit, as I said, two pieces of silver. One more computer chip combined with the wiring to make the advanced one and we're pretty much good to go. Now you can make some modifications here as well to put them inside so you can see you've got the sea truck underneath and that'll open up soon too. There you go, building it up and the robot's little drones are a uh, go. Now I'm not going to show you the full length sea trucks, that's going to be for another video where I pretty much go through everything like the aquarium module, the docking module, the fabricator module, the sleeper module, the storage module and the teleportation module. You can't actually place or build anything inside these little modules that you will place on your sea truck and the only one that's powered needed for oxygen is the sea truck itself. The sea truck will act like a spawn point so you're safe as long as you get in here and anytime you die you'll respawn in the sea truck cabin. There's a whole host of modifications you can get, including the afterburner to give you a short speed boost. You can take it deeper at the moment, like this, you can only go 150 meters, but you can get one that goes up to 300, then 650, then 1000 meters. And then you've also got the increasing speed while you're carrying other modules. And then last one is you've got a sea truck perimeter defense, which will scare off any creatures moderately sized from attacking you. If you disconnect the cabin from the rest of the modules that you'll go and find, then that is it. They won't have any power or oxygen. So you have to make sure they're connected and you have to make sure they're the right way. Now, a lot of that stuff is going to be shown much more detail. Once I've unlocked a couple more, I'm nearly there in my little guide. I'm just trying to research the last couple of modules. And obviously, I don't want to just cheat it in and spawn it in and show you guys. I want to show you the location of them as well. So that's super important. But as you saw, you've got two little modules that you can upgrade and obviously you've got your power cells that you can replace as well on either side of it. 
And that is how you get a sea truck in Subnautica. You can pretty much get this within a couple of hours of playing, maybe even quicker. As long as you follow this guide, I'm sure you'll be up and running in no time at all. And this will allow you to explore a lot more zones. If you found this video useful, please leave me a like. Check out the rest of my Subnautica content and I'll see you for more very soon.